and then getting on our tour bus for a visit to the great temples. We are ready to go to the temples to explore the temple Khmer Empire. And uh, on the way that we can see there are some building like apartment for the local people only. The first thing that we are going to visit we call uh, Angkor Thom. What does Angkor mean? So Angkor Thom is meaning that the big capitals, one of the ancient Khmer capitals from the 12th centuries. The king doesn't stay there anymore. Right now, the king is staying in the Grand Palace in Phnom Penh. In Angkor Thom, we will see South Gate and after that we will see Bayon Temple. Yeah, Bayon is a temple with uh, four faces of the Buddha and a lot of Buddha in uh, Bayon temples. And after Bayon, we will visit Bapun. Yeah. And after Bapun, we will visit the uh, Torres of the Elephant and the Torres of the Leopard King. And after that, we come back to the hotels in the evening. And we have a dinner show tonight, Cambodian show, Cambodian dancing, with a very nice performance uh, tonight as well, with uh, Cambodian food. So you can try the Cambodian food and watch out the Cambodian show tonight. Uh, the ticket that I gave you is very important for the trips. So please keep it with you all the time. Yeah? And before we go in to the entrance, we stop at the gate and we have to show the ticket to the security. If we don't have the ticket, the security is not allowed to go into the temples. The place that we are stopped here, we call South Gate of Angkor Thom. Angkor Thom is the capital which has four entrances. That the people can come into this entrance from the south, from the north, from the east, and from the west entrance. But the one of the entrance that's still in the good condition, that is the south entrance here. Angkor Thom was the big capital of Cambodia in the late 12th centuries, and it was built by the king Jayawaraman the seventh. This is the king he would like to dedicate the temple to Buddhists. Yes, to Buddhists. Because during the old day, we can see that some king are built a temple dedicated to Hindu, and some king he built a temple dedicated to Buddhists. But we can recognize that this is a temple that dedicated to the Buddhists, because we can see on the top of the gate over there, are decoration with the faces of Buddha. And that is the four faces of the Buddha. One face is are looking to our direction, another face behind, another face look to the left, and another face looks to the right hand side here. They are decoration by a group of the demon are standing on the right hand side. And the group of the gods, they are standing on the left hand side. But we can see some of the statue is no head. During the civil war in 1980, there was a lot of fighting here between the government soldier and the guerrilla soldier. The dimension of this capital is three kilometers each size. That means three by three. Altogether, this capital is nine square kilometers. Compare this in size to Vatican City, which is half a square kilometer, or to the great temple at Karnak in ancient Egypt, which is two square kilometers. That's why Angkor is claimed to be the world's largest religious complex. And notice how the enclosed area of Angkor Thom is much larger than the more famous Angkor Wat just to the south. During the old day in the 12th centuries, the special people they live inside the capital and the common people they live outside the capital. The king, the royal family, or some people who work for the government, they all together live inside the capital. And for the farmer, the normal people, they live outside the capital. So the people who live outside, they cannot go in into the capital. We will be see the temple inside. This place is just packed with monuments, but all of them are relevant. We're looking at one here, there is one there, there is one beyond there, tens of monuments inside here. We're gonna scratch the surface in the two days that we are here, just to get a feeling. Now, just to give you an idea, we're inside Angkor, and this, as Seti said, was the political and religious heart of the city. This was not the city, this was like the citadel, and only the political and religious high officials could come inside here. The people could not come here. So let's 
go see the next. This is we call uh, Bayon. It's a temple that the king he dedicated this temple to Buddhist. Yeah, to Buddhist. As we can see, there are many uh, faces of the Buddha on the top of the tower of the temples. Altogether, we have 54 tower. The 54 tower of this temple is symbol to the Cambodian provinces during the old day. So that means during the 12th century, Cambodia has 54 provinces. But right now, Cambodia has only 24 provinces. That means we lose some part of our province. There was a lot of invading from another neighbor country who get the land from Cambodia. Some part of Cambodia is go to Vietnam or go to Laos or go to uh, Thailand for that. This temple was built in the late 12th centuries by the King Cheyavaraman the Seventh. Many people they believe that and they thinking that this is a royal palace, but of course not. The king he doesn't stay or he doesn't sleep in this temple, but he just only built this temple for celebrate the religious party or for praying or for meeting with the religious people or sometimes he comes for making a meditation in this temple. And after finish the ceremony, everybody they go back home and the king he go back to the royal palace. So nobody sleep or stay in this one temple at all here. The stone that they used to build this temple here are built of sandstone. And you know, the sandstone are made uh, are taken from the Kulain mountain. Yes, Kulain mountain that is about 50 kilometers from here. And during the old day, how to transportation the stones. That is why they make a bamboo raft. And they cut the stone from the mountain and they're floating on the bamboo raft by the river. And after that, they send the elephant to the river and they pull the stone one by one from the river to put in the temple here. So we call sandstone. Sand stone. Um, beside the sandstone, we have another stone like we call lava stones. But the lava stone is the people they dig under the ground and then they can see the lava stone for that. It looks like the volcanic rock for that. This temple, it looks like very ruined, yeah, not, not good conditions. Because uh, uh, the king, during he built this temple, he pushed the architecture to build it quickly and not concentrate to the quality. So that is why this temple is not look strong. He's thinking that he, uh, he could be died before the temple complete. Some part of this temple are under restoration that's supported by the government of the Japan and the UNESCO. Yeah. We can see a lot of stone is scattered everywhere and we try to look in where is a stone to put it back to the temple and sometimes they do the excavations in the temple like that here. So in this gallery is talking about the king procession, talking about the soldier processions talking about the King Jayavaraman, the seventh soldier. They have also the music team. This is a music team. They are playing the gong. And this is the trumpet. Some people are playing the trumpet. And some people are playing the gong. And some part of the other gallery, we can see the people are playing the drum as well. On the elephant, they always have the mahout. This is mahout, that is the driver of the elephant. This is yeah, the statue of the Buddha that we call Avaluki Utiswara. That is a long name of the Buddha. That this temple was dedicated to Avaluki Utisvara. Sometimes he have four faces. Sometimes you can see they have four arms. Sometimes you can see this god has many arms. And here they are making a salute. Yeah, saluting or praying. Yeah, over here that is uh, the old religious people, the teacher of the king. Uh, Chayavaraman the seventh. You can see in this area they build uh, many temples but they are not from the same king and not from the same year. Some of them are from 10th century, 11th century, 12th century and the last one that we see here is from the 16th century here. Yeah. And the different religion as well. Buddhist, Buddhist, Hindu or other Hindu temple. That is a temple that we call uh, Bapun. That was built in the 11th centuries, dedicated to Hindu. But later, in 16th century, Buddhists came back into this temple and they tried to convert this temple from Hindu to Buddhist. So today, we can see there are two religions in this one temple. Half of this temple are designed in Hindu and half of this temple are designed in Buddhist. Uh, right now, this temple is under restoration by French. Uh, they spent a long, long year to restoration this temple because the foundation of this temple is not so good and many stone now fall down from this temple. There are a lot of hundred, hundred thousand of pieces of stone of this temple has been falling down. So that is why you can take a picture of one here and we walk.
This is the area of the elephant terrace with the 350 meter long. One elephant, but they have three trunks all together. They want to show that the elephant is very important. They use the elephant to pull the stone to build a temple. They use the elephant for transportation. And they can use the elephant in the battlefield for fighting as well here. The elephant is an animal that symbol of prosperity. Yeah. And uh, this is a nice view there. You can see the picture uh, with three trunks. One elephant, but they have three heads. Yeah, we're walking a little bit, uh, like another 300 meters over there, to the terrace of the leper king. This is a place that we call the terrace of the leper king. The king, he didn't get a leprosy. It's just only the nickname of this temple here. It so is it's not. only the nickname? What's only the, the real nickname. Name? What's the real story? We lose the information of this temple. Some historian people, they're making estimated that they use this temple for cremation. And then we're back on our bus and off to see more temples that we'll bring to you in future programs of World Traveler.